Hi, I'm going to show you how to make this really groovy makeup cake. You can personalize it to however you wish, if you've got a favorite brand of makeup or whatever, or you've got favorite colors, etc. But this is fantastic for a nine-year-old's birthday cake, right up to a 90-year-old, it doesn't matter. If you know a makeup artist or someone that's just totally obsessed with makeup, this is the perfect, perfect cake. I'm gonna show you how to make it. It's very, very simple. It's a lot of modeling, um, and then we just put it on top of the cake. So let's get cracking. We're going to first talk about all the different colors that we need, the sugar paste, because this is all about color, this cake. Okay, don't start making it in all the naturals and everything, because it, it sort of blends all into one. It's gotta be really bright and really eye-catching. So the first thing, actually, let me bring this back into shot so I can show you. The first thing we need to do is, is to make all the black, okay? So we're gonna do the, the, black, hand, the black handles and the lipstick uh, top and the blusher case and the eyeshadow cases. So that's all really important. So we're gonna do the black bits first. So I've got just plain sugar paste here. It hasn't got any gum in it or CMC or anything. I'm just using plain sugar paste. But as you can see, I've got it out. So we don't want it so it's really dry and cracky but it's quite good to leave it out for about 10 minutes just for it to toughen up. You know, there's that, real, there's that real difference between it being just a little bit tough and it being too hard and cracky. And I just want it nice and, and tough so that we don't have to put any CMC powder into it. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take my black. Now I've got a nice chunky bit of black sugar paste here. And the secret to really, really good, sharp, clean modeling two things. The first thing is good kneading. You have to knead your sugar paste really thoroughly because if you don't then you'll have lots of cracks and lots of creases and nothing will ever look very professional. That's the first rule. And the second rule is, as I said before, to keep it out, to leave it out so it's not too soft because you get really nice sharp cuts if it's not soft, if it's just got a little bit of a a toughness to it. Just take a lump of sugar paste onto your board and then down one side, can you see I'm just rolling it like a sausage, but I'm leaving one end nice and thick. Okay. Nice rolling. Not too many dents in it, remember, we want it nice and smooth. Now I need to chop that end off obviously to make the blusher but if I chop it off now it's going to be really soft so it will squidge down and it won't keep its shape. So this is what I mean about making your shapes and then leaving that. I'm going to leave it and then in about five minutes time I will make a cut in there and it will be a much sharper cut. But before I do that um, I'm going to obviously make the second part, the metal part of that blusher brush. So everything always starts usually with a circle, with a round ball, okay, when you're doing modelling. And with my four fingers, I'm just, and a bit of rolling, I'm just making a, a cylinder shape, like a barrel, okay? Now we want it to be roughly, if I'm going to cut that there, that's roughly going to be the right thickness. A lot of this is guesswork, but can you see that's pretty much going to be the right sort of size. Okay, then I'm taking a blunt knife or just a palette knife and down each end just roll without cutting. I'm just making grooves because you usually see that, don't you, in the metal of a blusher brush. Okay, so that's my metal part. So that's the blusher brush done. Now we're going to do the lipstick. So again, into a ball, and then roll down because again, we want a barrel shape. We're going to do an old fashioned style lipstick. Okay, it's a bit big, so push it down just to make it a bit stumpier. I've got all these great words, you know. I'm sure stumpier is a word in the English dictionary. And if it isn't, it is in the cake decorating dictionary. Stumpier. Okay, so there you go. And I'm gonna do exactly the same as I've done there, and, but just on one end, okay? Because you usually find just a little ridge on one end of your lipstick, 
okay? But then I need a metal, because when you turn your lipstick up, there's always a metal part, isn't there? And it's always slightly thinner than the actual casing. So again, a ball, rolling a barrel. Want it slightly thinner. That's a bit big, so I'm going to cut it off. Yeah, I'd say that's about right. Now this doesn't have the ridges in it, if you think about it, it's just a bit of metal, isn't it? So you've got your casing, then you've got your metal, then you've got your coloured lipstick. Okay, so that's good. Now the next part I'm going to do is I'm going to do a lip gloss and that's usually just like a square, like this one here, like a square unit. So the lid is black. So let me show you how to get it nice and square. We start off again with a ball roll into a barrel, that's about right. Now I'm going to bring in a little bit of cornflour. Now really dangerous to use white cornflour when you're dealing with black, so I'm not going to do lots and lots of dabbing of the cornflour on my worktop, but I do want to make my hands non-stick. So a little tip for you, to make your hands non-stick without actually discolouring your sugar paste, Dab on and then rub together and you'll get this really silky non-stick sort of feel and then obviously that rubs off onto your, onto your sugar paste. So I've got that which is nice and round and I'm going to, with my smoother or just something that's flat, I'm going to pat like so, then turn it onto its side, pat again, turn it onto its side, oops, wants to stick. Don't worry, just give it a little bit of rub with your non-stick hands. That's it. And then the third one along, or fourth one I think that is now. Now can you see that that round barrel has turned into square? It's still round obviously at the ends, so we're just going to chop off our round ends just to create a nice square edge. That's going to be the, the lid of our lip gloss. Again, a nice little ridge on the top and on the bottom, just makes it look really authentic. Okay, so that's the lid of your lip gloss. Okay, now we're going to do the top of the, I don't know what this is, a face powder or a blusher, um, and the top and the bottom of our eyeshadow. So I'm going to take a nice lump of black sugar paste, give it a little bit of a knead, guess what, roll it into a ball. Now we're going to roll this out, so I'm going to put a little dab of cornflour on my work board but I'm not going to put it on the top. So if you don't actually cornflour the top of your sugar paste, you just need to make sure you go really, really light with your rolling because if you put too much pressure on it, it's just going to want to stick to your rolling pin and cause you grief if I keep trying to peel it off. But can you see, if I put the perfect amount of pressure on it, it doesn't want to stick. Okay, so I've rolled that out to about half an inch thick. And then, you really, these are gonna be your best friend when you're making this cake. Um, I've got a set of five round cutters, just metal round cutters, but you really do need these to get that real perfect geometrical look to the cake. So I'm going to use the biggest one here, which I would say is probably about two inches diameter. And I'm going to cut out really, really nice, oops, and clean cut one of those. And that's gonna be the bottom of my eyeshadow. I'm going to cut out a second one, okay pop that out and then I'm going to take the next size down and make sure you get it in the middle cut out and that will give you the perfect rim okay so that's the rim for your eyeshadow yeah now this is too small, wouldn't it be great if we could use this one to, to make our blusher, but it's not actually big enough, so we're going to just collect it together. 
Roll it out again. Remember, not too much pressure. And again, I'm going to take my biggest cutter and that's going to be the lid. Oops, if it's stuck to the worktop, make sure you lift off with a palette knife. We don't want to misshapen our circle, okay? Great, so now we've got our blusher and we've got our face powder lid. And now we need to make our palette, our eyeshadow palette. So a nice lump of sugar paste. Again, a little bit of dab on the worktop, none on the top, and we're going to roll out. See, it wants to stick. Don't worry, just nice and gently, backwards and forwards, and then turn. Backwards and forwards and turn. Okay. Can you see that I've it's got no whiteness to it at all. If you put sugar, a sugar um, icing sugar or cornflour on it. You're going to get a cloudiness, it's not going to look as nice and sharp. Okay, so a nice rectangle shape. Now it depends how fussy you are. If you're a bit OCD about this, you can get your ruler out and your set square and everything, but I'm not going to bother with that. I'm just going to cut off my ends, like so. And then I'm going to cut my length it lengthways to create a rectangle. It's pretty much as perfect as I need it. Now I will lift it up with my palette knife. I don't want to distort my shape. Okay. Bit of cornflour underneath. I can feel it sticking a little bit. Okay. Now we're going to put six different colours in this eyeshadow palette. So we need to get a circle that's going to be big enough to not look silly against it and small enough to fit it all in. So start in the middle at the top like that with, my, with your um, smaller circle and do a two layer cut like so in the middle. Then we're going to do to the side one, two, Okay, and then I'm going to do two more to the other side. All nice and geometric and even. Okay, now once you've done that, you can then assess whether you need to cut your ends off. You see, I think my ends are a bit too long, so I'm going to cut them off a bit there. I think that makes it look more balanced, but don't make that decision until you've actually cut your circles. That's better. Okay. Good. So now we've got our cutouts of our eyeshadow palette. Be really careful with it. Nice, gentle touch. Brilliant. Okay, so that's pretty much. Oh no, we need to do our, our eyeshadow applicator. Again, a nice long sausage. And the same technique as the lip gloss lid. So I'm going to take my smoother, pat, 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 turn it onto its side, pat, 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 peel it off, pat, pat. Doesn't need that third pat. <laughs> and can you see it's a nice square shape and then just cut the ends off and we'll leave that to set. So that's our eyeshadow applicator. Okay, so we've done all the black now. Make sure you wash your hands before you go on to the colours, otherwise you'll get horrible black colours, uh, black all over your new colours. So I've got here, choose what colours you want to have in your eyeshadow palette. Um, I've just chosen these six. As I said before, make them nice and bright. It really makes a difference. And as I said to you as well, have this out for about 10 minutes. So it's nice and tough. It hasn't dried out, but it's just tough. It's not as sticky as it was before. So give it another knead, each one of them. You only need a tiny, tiny little amount. Just kneading them up, just so that when I roll them out, they don't 
crease and get lots of horrible dry bits in them. And then we're going to roll these all to the same height. That's it. Okay. So we're going to, we want them so they slightly stick up above the hole that we've just cut for them. So mm, I'm going to say just under sort of half an inch really. Try and make them pretty much the same, but don't really do, you don't need to get any rulers out or anything. That's it. Now, of course, the secret to getting this perfect is to make sure that you use the same cutter to cut these out that you use to cut this one. Now, another little tip as well, because you use it with black, make sure you just give it a little clean round that cutter, otherwise you're going to get the black around it. And then down, and then using a soft brush, just pop the colour out. Now can you see how easy it comes out? And that is because we have left it just to, to get some air to it for, for 10 minutes. Otherwise, if you don't do that and it's nice fresh soft sugar paste, it's really hard to get these shapes out. So just cut out your six colours. Now just make sure that they can fit in. They might, they might try and pop out, obviously, because it's, because we haven't glued them or anything. They might try and pop out when we lift it up to put it on the cake. Don't worry about that because we can just glue them back in once they go on the cake. But what we're doing here is just making sure before it all dries too much that they do all fit in nice and snug. Okay, doesn't really matter where they go. Just a nice scattering of colour. Perfect. Good. Okay, and then choose your favourite colour. I'm going to choose orange. And that's going to be our eyeshadow colour. So again, a little bit of dab. Now, dab on your hands, remember, and put it, polish it onto the colour. That means that it will go non-stick, but without taking the colour out of the orange. So just a little bit of rub cornflour onto the coloured sugar paste. Nice and thin because this is going just straight onto, onto the base, then on and then over the top, you see. Okay, so again, this needs to be the same size as the cutout of the lid, which is that one. Pull that one out. Little bit of edible glue just in the middle. Don't go all the way around the outside. You don't have to at this moment. Put that one, make sure it goes in the middle, like so. And then another little bit of edible glue all the way around the outside of that colour. And then, of course, this has been out now for about 10 minutes. So again, it's feeling nice and sturdy. But you can just pop that over the top. It all keeps its shape nicely and looks really, really sharp and neat. And there's your little eyeshadow palette. So I'm now going to do the base of my face powder. So I'm going to do that in a pale pink. So again, take a nice lump, roll it into a ball. Hold on, that hasn't kneaded enough. Knead it till it's nice and soft. Roll it into a ball. Okay. And then we're going to pat it down you need to pat it down to this size lid that you use, this cutter that I use to do the lid. This needs to be the same size. Now, can you see that's not big enough? Okay. So I need to put a little bit more to it because I'm going to put the cutter right down the sides. Can you see that's how I've got that absolute perfect, perfectly straight size? It's because I've actually cut it with a metal cutter. So you must make sure before you cut it, that it is slightly wider than the cutter. Okay, that's it, that's perfect. So pat, 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 and then with your cutter, make sure you do it on the side because I don't want to dent the inside of it. I'm going to 
all the way down with my cutter and then pull it away okay and then lift it up now I always find it's much better if you actually turn it over and use the top side to go on that one because that's the bit that you see and that's the bit that's much sharper so that will then go on top of there like so then just use your hands just to put it together to make sure they're completely even and just a final pat great so that's our face powder done lip gloss very easy exactly the same as how you did the lid but just longer and with a colour give it a nice knead make sure there's no creases or folds start with a ball roll into a sausage now this needs to be the same sort of size as the lid so keep the lid handy obviously this is miles too long but just work with it and then we can cut it at the end and then again with your palette knife turn it onto all four sides make it nice and square <laughs> unlike what I'm doing that's it. The secret to getting the square is to have it the same pressure all the way around. That's good. That's fine. That's about right. Yeah, that's good. And then cut one end. Whatever length you want it. They're quite long, aren't they, lip glosses? So that end. And then just measure it up. That's pretty much perfect I'd say I'm not going to glue it at this point it's not worth it we might as well do that when it goes onto the cake so just make sure you've just got all your parts that's good okay so now let's do our lipstick now it goes without saying that I think it really needs to be bright red lipstick so I'm going to use this red sugar paste so this is our lipstick there's our holder our metal part and then we're going to do the coloured part now. Again, the lipsticks are quite stubby, aren't they? So make sure your barrel is a bit thicker, really, than your lip gloss. That's about right. And then cut sharp one end. And then the other end cut on a diagonal because that's usually how we wear our lipstick isn't it measure it up against the metal make sure it's not bigger than the metal otherwise it might look a bit odd okay so you can see how those three parts are going to go together so again put to one side so this is our applicator stick if you look at an applicator it sort of has got a point on the end of it hasn't it so roll into a ball and then simply, it's so easy, just point, just do a pinch at the end. That's pretty much how I do it. And then cut the end off to make it nice and square. And then add it to your, your stick. Don't worry if it gets a little bit of colour on it from your hands because we're going to douse it in colour anyway because the whole idea is it looks like you've been using it put your eyeshadow on okay so that's going to go like that again don't bother sticking it we'll just keep it like that okay so where are we up to that's pretty much it apart from obviously we need to do the brush now the blusher brush so this has been sitting getting nice and hard since the beginning of the video so I'm going to cut it now I'm going to cut it to about there now can you notice because I've had it sitting how nice and sharp it is. If I'd have done that right at the beginning, it would have all sort of, you know, squashed into one because it didn't have time to set. But because we've given it time to set, it's worked perfectly. And then once you've got your metal bit here, then just form it around it like so, okay? And then this bit's gonna go on the end. So this actually is the most narrow part because this is the handle, that's the metal part, and then we want it almost to billow out so that it does look like a brush. 
I've got, well, what I call brush colour here, whatever colour you want to use. But this is pretty much a bristle brush colour, I reckon. Nice ball. And then one end, can you see I'm pinching it so I get a nice pear shape? Okay, I'm going to move this out of the way. Like so, because now what I'm going to do is I'm going to squash it. We want this nice and flat. Okay, so squash it down. I reckon that's pretty much right. And then with my palette knife, lots and lots and lots and lots. The more you do, the more realistic it looks. Okay. Now that does look realistic, but I think if you cut it off at the end, it suddenly makes it look much better. And then score at the end, and it takes that sharpness away. Okay, so we've pretty much got everything we need apart from the foundation. Now, I've done a really sort of old fashioned -y looking foundation. You can do whatever foundation you like, but I'm just going to show you how to do this this squeezy bottle sort of look, because it's really simple. So again, take a foundation colour, obviously, and then just roll it into a barrel. Cut one end off. And then the other end, I'm going to squash down like that. Okay. And again, with my end of my palette knife, score the end. Now I know that this is far too long, but we're going to cut it off at the end. Just make sure you just score it like so, and then cut. Okay. And that makes it look, you know, the end that you get, which looks like it's been pressed together. Okay. Then take just a tiny little bit, and then just roll it on one edge to create a point. Like that. Cut the end off so it's nice and sharp and then we're just going to attach it to the end like that. Okay? Don't worry if it's not attached now. We'll attach that later. Okay, so they're all the parts. Um, I'm going to have a little clear up because next what we're going to do is we're going to spray our metal bits silver so they look ultra, ultra realistic. Okay, so now I'm just going to spray um, these black bits to make them metal. Now you would think that I was going to use a silver spray to make silver, but actually I'm not. We've got a little trick here. If you're using black sugar paste, then use this PME Pearl Lustra edible spray. Obviously it's edible, but it's a pearl spray, it's not silver. And you'll see it gives a real perfect silver finish. Now, as, as you can see, I've got this in a little box because it's best not to do it in your kitchen with everything around because it does go, well, it doesn't go everywhere, but it goes in the air. So um, make sure you haven't got loads of things hanging around. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray it and then just, I'm just, while I'm getting everything together, I'm just going to put the lid on the box and I just find that it just settles the air a bit quicker. Okay, so short, sharp squirts with this. We're not going to spray it all over the place, but just onto the black bits, on the top, over the sides, pretty much done. Not too much because what will happen is it will start getting too much and it will start running and then it doesn't look natural. So I'm just going to pop the lid onto that and then we'll come back to those in a second. Okay, so let's start constructing our cake. Um, I have covered cake here in this lovely bright pink and I've put it on a purple board and I've got this really funky um, leopard and animal print ribbon that I'm just going to tie around the cake just to finish it off. That's it, so I don't have to worry about what's going on around the edge. Great, so just tie that. I'll sort the back out a little bit later. Is that okay? Yeah, that's good. Okay, so 
First thing we'll do is let's put our palette on. Now don't forget to stick these bits on. You get really, really involved in putting the stuff on and everything. And of course, then you can put it in the box. And as soon as you walk away, if it's not glued, it'll all fall off. So when you're deciding where things go, make sure you do put a little dab of edible glue on it just to make sure. OK, so remember what I said before about this eyeshadow palette? They're not glued. See, they're all popping out. Doesn't matter, though, because what we're going to do is we're going to lay that on the top there. A little bit of dab of glue in each hole. And then you can just stick them in. This is the real fun part. And in fact, if you're making this cake for um, a little girl or if she's your little girl, this is the part that they probably will want to get involved in because it is really good fun. Okay, good. Okay, so then let's take our face powder, stick that there. I'm copying what I've done here just because it's, um, it's easier for me on, on video, but obviously you can put it wherever you want to. Now I'm going to just put a little bit of glue on the side there so that I can just tip that like so, because I think that looks a bit more realistic. Okay, now we're going to put the blusher brush on, which means I need a little bit of my metal. Now obviously in a perfect world, do your edible spraying, do your um, edible pearl spraying and try and leave it for about 10-15 minutes just so that it gets nice and dry. Obviously I haven't done that, I've just literally sprayed it so it's a little bit wet. It'll be absolutely fine but if you do have a little bit of time it just makes it easier for you so that it's not still wet. I'm picking up my blusher handle, lay it where you want it. Don't forget as I say to put the glue on like so. And then a little bit of glue on the end and a little bit of glue on the cake. This is my metal part. And then just butt it up against it. Perfect. A little bit of glue on the end and then on the cake again. And then put, attach your brush. Okay. So much easier to do all the attaching once it's on the cake. Next up is my lipstick, so let's put that bit there. I do find it easier to put the glue on, on the side as well as just on the cake, just to make sure that it is double stuck. Move that around, that's it. And then that can go on there. Is it looking good? I can't see. I'm doing it back to front. Yeah, it's looking good. Okay. Let's have the long lip gloss. Now make sure things don't hang off the side too much. I don't want them to fall off. So make sure you've got quite a bit of it that's on the cake. That's it. Okay. And then I've actually put the glue on the foundation and I'm going to put that across like so. And then don't forget your little you can go there like that. Okay. Good. Now you can see on this cake, I haven't done it on this one because we've got lots going on, but you can just roll a little bit of your sugar paste and can you see what I've done? I've just curled it around so that it looks like you've squidged it and it's popping out the end, okay? So that's just sugar paste. Just get a bit of sugar paste, roll it like a sausage and then just trail it around. It looks really effective. Now I'm going to take the applicator and I'm going to put it right across my palette and then just glue the ends on. The more higgledy piggledy and piled up and chaotic it looks, the better I think. Don't have it all nice and neat because I don't know about you, but I don't know anybody who's got a nice neat makeup bag. <laughs> 
Okay, so that's pretty much um, it finished. The other thing that you can do, which does look really good, is I've put face because obviously I don't really want to be advertising any makeups, but if you do have a makeup that you want to advertise, then now's the time to do it. I'm using an edible pen. Now, can you see that this is a bit soft, this sugar paste? If you can leave it to dry just for about 20 minutes, just for it to get a nice skin on the sugar paste, it's much easier to do this. But just score with the pen the message you want to get across. This might even be nice to put the person's name or happy birthday or anything like that, but I've just put a face like so, okay? Good, now, so the finishing touches, I've got some edible dusting powders. So usually these are used for um, flowers and things like that, but we're gonna use them as our eyeshadow powders. They look really good. So I've got some nice green, blue, and pink here. Just, just choose colors that obviously that match um, the colors that you've used. And with a soft dusting brush, okay, so a brush that's nice and soft, I'm going to start playing. So for example, where my green eyeshadow is here, I'm gonna get my green powder. So dust the green on so that all looks really lovely. And then just a little bit of kitchen roll, just take off that excess green and then let's move on. So for example, I've got some pink here. That I'm going to dust around here. And then with the excess, I'm gonna dust it onto the end of my applicator, okay? Take off the excess and then do exactly the same thing with this blue. Just so it all just looks a bit of a mess. Okay. Take that off. Also, um, the pink, put some on the end of your blusher brush. Okay, and take that off. Just dust off any excess that you've got around your cake board. And you can go on forever and ever and ever dusting. It depends how messy you want to make it. And um, that basically is the end. So you can make this look however you like, but I think you'll agree it is a really, really groovy makeup cake. <laughs>